to address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. For Inside Tennessee, I'm John Becker. The state is playing host to one of the hottest political races in the country. It could tip the balance of the Senate. The Republican candidate is businessman and former Chattanooga Mayor Bob Corker. The Democrat is West Tennessee Congressman Harold Ford Jr. The two are vying for Senator Bill Frist's seat. And this morning on a special one-hour edition of Inside Tennessee, we'll be sitting down with both candidates to talk about who they are and why they're running. And joining us for our first half hour is Bob Corker. Thanks for being here. Thrilled to be here. Thank you. And our panelists, you know a couple of them, Bill Williams, see a lot on 10 News, as well as my cohort, uh, Robin Williams, as well. And we'd like to welcome our third panelist, Hoyt Kennedy, from the uh, New Sentinel. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. Yeah. And let's uh, let's start by uh, sort of defining. Both you and the congressman have been defining how you would lead Tennessee. Right. And one of the things that I've been asked is, how is East Tennessee going to look different under your leadership versus his leadership in the Senate? Well, of course, I'm a product of East Tennessee. Uh, I went to college here at UT. I grew up in uh, Chattanooga. Started working when I was 13. Built a business. Uh, here in East Tennessee, uh, starting with $8,000 when I was 25 years old. I saw a community problem in my early 30s uh, where we had a lot of citizens in our city that didn't have decent housing. So I led the creation of a nonprofit that today has helped over 10,000 families have decent housing, again, trying to solve a problem. I went to Nashville uh, in the middle 90s as commissioner of finance for our state. Um, was able to put in place with others one of the best welfare reform packages in our country and then as mayor solved a number of problems that we had there so as it relates to East Tennessee I think that you would see someone that not only has helped shape a city in East Tennessee helped shape the state hopefully in some small way but also has been shaped if you will by East Tennessee the relationships that I have here and I think what you'd see is I know what you'd see is some somebody in Washington that represents the values of East Tennesseans, and I think Tennesseans across the state. Right. Mr. Corker, I, I applaud the, what you've done as far as build, building homes. I think that, that's tremendous. I understand it. Uh, that was triggered by a trip to Haiti, a, a yes, mission sir. trip to Haiti. That's, that's very good. But you and I both know that poverty remains a, a, a terrible legacy right here in Tennessee, and it doesn't change much over the years. 22% of our kids right now living in poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, I go into communities here in East Tennessee where 85, 90, 95% of the children are on free or reduced price lunches. That doesn't change year after year after year. You have done your bit as an individual. A lot of us have worked as individuals, but somebody needs to do something, and I would think it would be the government to do something about changing those terrible figures. Mm -hmm. Can that be done in Washington? Can you help do that? Sort well, of I, think, uh, I think what you want people in Washington to do is to create an environment uh, where people from all walks of life can flourish. And I think that's a role of government is to create that, create that environment, uh, making sure that we uh, remain the country of innovation, making sure that our youth understand the challenges of the future and are prepared for that making sure that we keep taxes low so that our citizens here in Tennessee can keep more of what they earn in their pockets, uh, making sure we have an energy policy that causes us to be independent, energy independent, making sure we focus on affordable and accessible health care. But what we need to do in Washington is to create the environment for local and state governments to do what they do best, and that is educate our children, uh, do those things in communities that allow us to recruit jobs, good paying jobs. You know, there's a lot of talk about the minimum wage, and certainly uh, that needs to be adjusted along with re uh, relieving some of the burdens that small businesses have. But what we as a country have got to work on is those good paying jobs that raise people out of poverty, that raise and give people opportunities. I have lived uh, working in that environment. I want to take those uh, experiences to Washington to help us as a country ensure that generations that come after us have an even better opportunity. Mr. Corker, oh, go ahead. Uh, 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 just a follow-up question. Would you vote to increase the minimum wage? I would, but what I like to do with things like that is to also alleviate burdens. So I, I like, if we're going to raise it, my, look, my daughter worked as minimum wage uh, uh, summer before last at a coffee shop. I've worked as uh, for minimum wage. I'm sure that all of you have, and certainly it's been a long time since it's been raised. But I think when we do those kind of things, we ought to also lessen burdens on small business to the extent we can, the people that are actually paying 
uh, for those wages uh, that are at the minimum level. So I'd like to see a balance there, but yes, I would. Mr. Corker, you talk about all the different issues that, that need to be addressed. And uh, as a viewer watching and, and hearing the candidates, you hear this just list of things, you know, from mm -hmm. illegal immigration mm -hmm. and on. But what do you see is the number one issue, if you go to Washington, that must be addressed first and foremost? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that uh, there are so many complex issues, it's difficult to say there is just one. Where I would throw a tremendous amount of energy, uh, and it would be into making sure that we do, in fact, have an, an energy independence, that we really, you know, just recently, uh, our Tennessee citizens have benefited from a drop in gasoline prices, and what happens uh, usually when citizens become less interested a lot of time, politicians become less, less interested in solving problems. And I want to keep a continued focus on making sure we do have that energy independence. Health care, that's something to me that is very, very important to Tennesseans and also to businesses that are trying to compete in a global economy. So both of those, obviously within the framework of doing everything we can in Washington to, to live within our means, that we're passing on trillions of dollars of debt to future generations, to my daughters and others who come behind me. And obviously on a daily basis doing those things to ensure that we're safe and secure as a country. At the end of the day, none of the other things matter unless our citizens are safe and secure. At, the, at that, we're just going to have to take a break and then we'll let Hoyt jump in as well. Be back in just a minute.